When we opened the doors to the Driver Rehabilitation Center over a decade ago, the folks who got nominated for the country's most embarrassing driving award would arrive here, then they would immediately try to get the hell out of here. These days, though, the folks who get nominated for the most embarrassing driving award in the country arrive here, then they try to stay here. Sort of like that guy. I really don't know who that guy is, but he's been here doing that for the last two months. Now, to you, that might seem a little odd, but to me, it's normal, because this is Canada's worst driver. On this special speed-related season of Canada's Worst Driver, we've taken the most abysmal motorists in the country off the road in order to educate them. When you're reversing in a straight line, you've got to look out the rear window. So far, three drivers have graduated from our rehab center. High five! But six license holders remain in the running to be named Canada's Worst Driver. Our head driving instructor, Tim Danter. We'll start this episode by monitoring the behavior of Canada's worst drivers as they drive through the tiny, safe, uncongested town of Dunville, Ontario. And Jillian will be the first driver, although she'd rather not be. I really do want to go back that road. It's okay, we can do this. Let's start rolling and let's, <sighs> let's get this journey started. Oh, God. Here we go. This journey is actually a driving challenge that we call, What Do You See? In it, drivers must articulate all relevant observations. What do you see up ahead, Jillian? Tim says it's a way to get the eyes and the mind working together. Oh. You did fine. You did what you were supposed to do. That's fine. We're okay. <laughs> If Jillian can start focusing on traffic-related things, like... Trucks. Her fear should subside. Tell me more. The trees. Do the trees really matter? No. Okay. What driving-related do you see up ahead? There's the vehicles. Hmm? For the last two years, Jillian has been so afraid of driving, the only driving she's done has been to work and back home again. Yet, she believes... I can drive fine. If Jillian could drive fine, a pedestrian crossing the road wouldn't bother her. Oh, no, I got a person this too. But is she walking our way? <laughs> no, I Good, the event's passed. She's not a problem to us anymore, then. Jillian's not only fearful, she's delusional. I don't have a problem with driving. I mean, I'm a good driver. A good driver? What do those lights mean? Jillian doesn't know who has the right of way. Can I go, Neil? She doesn't know what to do at a crosswalk ahead sign. What am I supposed to do here? And Jillian doesn't know what to do at an unmarked intersection. Oh, my God, is that an intersection? Oh, my God. It's okay. It's an intersection, but we, 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 didn't have, we didn't have to stop. It's okay. I don't want to do it. If Jillian wants to drive, she's going to need a whole new mindset. I know how to drive, but I just can't do it. Shalom! A new driver from Calgary doesn't check cross streets he drives past. Checking the back window, checking the front. Checking back, checking front, checking back. Keeping my eyes. Through a lot of intersections, haven't we? Yeah. Maybe the front. It seems that for Shalom to observe across street, he has to be stationary. Check bolt, check mirror, blind spot. I'm going to make the turn. No cars. Did we need to stop there? Uh, no. 
Shalom even stops at yield signs. And he was like, why would you stop at the yield? You know, I just, I'm always safety. Check the back. I don't like to feel rushed, you know? Shmuel, Shalom's brother, pays attention to pointless things while driving. I see a beer store to my right. Does that really matter? No. Okay, keep it to what matters. Once Tim tells him that... There's a white car over here that's turning. Shmuel's focus is perfect. There's a truck to my right. Okay. Here's the railroad crossing. Speed limit's 50 kilometers an hour. Shmuel knows that his focus is something he needs to keep an eye on. I get distracted. Listen, you know. Overly nervous Renee sometimes chooses not to look while driving. Oh God. Okay, that's okay. We'll take care of it. Let me change both things. There you go. Good. <laughs> With her eyes open, Renee doesn't see a whole lot more. Got a motorcycle. Did you happen to see that car on the right at the intersection? Nope. Renee sees some things that baffle her. Things like crosswalks. I'm not sure what this, seal, this thing is right here that I'm on, the brown thing. Jordan is looking at another driver's face. Just to make sure he's staying there. Hoping it will alert him as to what that driver's going to do. You look at his front tire. Oh, front tire good. tells everything because it tells movement plus direction. Jordan, though, observes more things on this challenge than anyone else. I think I notice a lot of the things, especially with the glasses now. Holly, from small town Ontario, Drives through five consecutive intersections without checking for oncoming traffic. You let me know what's going on with your eyes. Just looking straight ahead. At a T intersection with a one-way street, Polly doesn't see the warning signs. I have to go either right or left. I'll leave that choice to you. Um, well, I'd like to go left, please. Polly observed fewer things than anyone else. I didn't see that right. When we come back, Jillian has a session with our therapist, Shamala. So you're really, really frustrated with yourself. Because I want to do it. Then, everyone is taught and tested on parallel parking. I'm really, really frustrated, and Shamala said I am not allowed to take it out on you anymore. So I'm trying really hard to be nice. When Jillian drives by herself at home, she always cries. Oh, my life. And when Jillian drove with Tim this morning, she cried the whole time. People are going to get mad at me no, because I'm standing no, here. However, <laughs> off. when Jillian drives with Mitchell, her patient fiancé... Stand on the brakes. Can you shut up? Instead of crying, she rudely yells at him. That wasn't that hard. No, because I know how to do it. This is why we have a therapist on set. Shamala Kiru is now trying to understand why Jillian is so aggressive to Mitch. I get mad because he can do these things and I can't. So you're really, really frustrated with yourself. You're really angry with yourself. Right? I want to do it. Right. And essentially, I think you end up emotionally abusing him. Yeah. And I feel bad because he's so nice. Do you know where this is going to lead you? Alone. How has Mitchell tolerated the abuse this long? How are you? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. It's great to meet you. I, I let her do this 
because mm -hmm. I feel it's easier for her just to get it out of her system than for us to spend hours and hours and hours fighting about it. But my question is, how long are you going to let it go for? Because you're, you're not. You're not. There's but, no way. There'll be a breaking point, and you won't be around anymore. I guess I, you're you're probably 100% right. But up until that point, I don't know any other way to deal with it. Can we explore an alternative strategy? Of course. If the way that she's speaking is rude and disrespectful and out of line, you need to tell her that. She might absolutely lose it on you once you start standing up to her. But I just got to deal with it. Tell her, you got to stop, or I'm stop the car, I'm getting out. And you need to be willing to deal with that. It will get worse before it gets better. It always does. Mm -hmm. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is to parallel park. Why? Because they suck at it. And specifically, they'll be parking this massive 1976 Cadillac Calais in a space that's only five feet longer than the vehicle. Is this cruel and unusual punishment? No, this is educational. And by that, I mean, before trying to park, they'll be getting a lesson from our expert, Tim. In Jillian's lesson, she learns that step one of parallel parking is to approach a meter away and stop when the back tires of our vehicle is at the back bumper of the car beside us. Step two is steering towards the curb and reversing as the front end swings until you see the passenger headlight in the door mirror. Okay. When you see the passenger side headlight in the mirror, turn away from the curb and swing the front of the car in stop, put the car in drive, and pull forward. The last time Mitchell suggested parallel parking in St. John's... Parallel park right there. It didn't go over well. Why do you gotta be such a Today in rehab, Jillian isn't following Tim's four-step lesson. And she isn't following Shamala's counseling advice. Why can't they give you a regular car, like a car that you drive? Because this is the challenge. It's challenging. I didn't ask for your opinion. Well, well don't, don't ask a question then. Jillian isn't looking in her wing mirror to see this car's passenger side headlight. Without doing that, she's just guessing at her angle. Do I hit that car again? I keep pushing it. She really needs to overcome this fear and anxiety. Up to now, her strategy has been to avoid it. What I've asked her to do is actually own the discomfort and do it anyway. Shamala and Tim are watching every move the bad drivers make. Alongside our high-speed instructor, Philly Platerno. And our legal expert, Cam Woolley. At the end of each episode, these experts help me decide who will graduate. At the end of our series, we will collectively decide who will be named Canada's worst driver. I did exactly what Shamla told me to do, and now I'm just mad. The reason why she's getting frustrated is because she's forgetting the step where she has to look in the mirror. But I hit the car! How do I do that without hitting that car? Don't go back so fast. Can you please, please just leave me alone? Because I'm really, really frustrated. And Shamala said I am not allowed to take it out on you anymore. So I'm trying really hard to be nice. I understand. But you're asking me for help. I'm not. I'm talking to myself. OK. And I'm irritated. And I can't put this car in here. And I am about to lose my mind. Oh. I'm done. I'm done. You can't be done. I you're am not, done. No, I'm not, not doing. No, no, I'm no. done. I'm you getting out of this car. You, have, you can't be done. No. I am. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I don't think you're done. Well, I am. I don't think you should. I'm done. I think you'll regret it. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't. I'm done. I'm I don't think you should quit. No, I'm sick of hitting cars. Okay, do one thing for me. Do it without me in the car. 
Just go do it. You could, you got this. Just go do it. And you're on your own. Just go do it. Fine. Don't go. Just you're do not, it. I'm not. You I'm, stay I'm, away. I'm gonna stay clear. You just I'm go do you it. Now. Go do it. Cause you're getting on my nerves. Yeah. We'll just get her done. Torture. Make me do it over and over. We're letting all of Canada's worst drivers have 10 chances to pass this challenge. Is it? Is it? Why can I still hear him talking? <laughs> oh my God. Can I ride with you? I'm having a really hard time. That's okay. You have a hard time every time. Let's uh, get lined up, and then before we go, we'll remember uh, the lessons. Okay? Step one is getting into the starting position. What's next step? I'm going to turn into the space. So when you come back around, what's your trigger to know when to go straight? I don't know. You use that mirror to do what? Oh, Yeah. To... This mirror to see. Oh, the headlight. Exactly. Yes, he exactly. did say that. That's the step you've been that. missing? Yeah, I never looked at that once. I make Jillian look at that. That's where you're looking. That's where you're looking. I know, but I need to. That's where you're looking in that oh. mirror. If you follow the steps, parallel parking is easy. Okay, stop. Okay. And that's perfect. Okay? Did I fail? I don't care. What I care about is Jillian's abusive treatment of Mitch. And don't tear Mitch's head off. It's not his fault. I know, I know, I know. I know that I know. guy is there for you, man. I know. You are so lucky to have a caring guy like that. Just 10 minutes later, Jillian blames Mitch for her freak out. You didn't listen to what she said this morning. Why? You said you wouldn't say anything. I went in with a good attitude. I was happy. I was going to do it. I hit the car. I got upset. But that didn't mean that you had to jump in and say all this stuff to me. OK. But you also got to give me the benefit of the doubt there that this was our first go at this. And no, but you, that's what I mean. But you're The first go, and you still f***ed it up. Mitchell Kylie. I'm telling you right now, what you did was wrong. Before we move on, let's take a brief moment to regroup and remember that life doesn't have to be hideous. Polly seems to understand Tim's lesson. Just go nice and slow and remember everything that Tim told you. That's Jeff. Holly's son-in-law. Okay. Step by step. In practically every municipality in the country, cars must be parked within 30 centimeters of the curb to prevent being ticketed. So, we've given Canada's worst drivers a 30 centimeter ruler to measure whether or not their parking job is legit. That is a classic park job in the classic car. By following Tim's lesson, Polly passes. Thank you, Tim. Shalom is up next. Want me to direct you? No, I don't need you directing. What are you, Steven Spielberg? Shalom needs someone to direct him. On every attempt... No, I fucked up. Shalom either hits a vehicle... Did I hit it? ...or ends up parked parallel to the curb but several meters away from it. Okay, let me measure and see if I'm freaking. Shalom fails all 10 attempts. I don't even have to measure. Oh, God. When the parallel parking challenge concludes, it's time for our annual distracted driving demonstration. I want to send a text. Canada's 
worst drivers are learning how to parallel park. And we're going to position the car approximately one meter away. Jordan will now see if he can do it. But he doesn't seem to know what a meter is. Are you happy where you are? No, I'm too far away. That's Lorraine, Jordan's mother. After failing nine times due to an incorrect starting position, Lorraine suggests starting a little bit to the left. Do you know oh, how close I'm you are? It. Yeah. This failure is the most baffling ever. I'm just so confused. Shmuel was practicing parallel parking before coming to rehab. And on his fourth attempt today... That is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Shmuel parks perfectly. I did fantastic. Renee didn't reverse at all before coming to rehab. You back up like a pro now. I know. That's Jackie, Renee's concerned cousin. So I want to parallel park like a pro too. Renee Ugh. tries to follow Tim's steps. No. And on her eighth attempt, they all fall into place for her. They pass. Renee passes. I parked him as a Cadillac. Two years ago in Ontario alone, 78 people died due to distracted driving. That's 78 lives lost due to absolutely pointless things like talking on the cell phone or doing your lipstick or eating a sandwich or messing around with your hair or fiddling with the radio or reaching for a drink or looking at an iPad. Instead of focusing on the road, drivers need to not have their ability to see and steer stolen from them by themselves. The next lesson for Canada's worst drivers is to go through our annual distracted driving demonstration. Only the three distracted drivers we have in rehab this year will be doing the distracted driving demonstration. And they'll be doing it in this 1974 Cadillac Fleetwood. On this extremely unchallenging track. Jordan is up first. So this course is a piece of cake, right? Yeah, it is. Please drive 25 kilometers an hour and send me a text about what it is you're doing. I won't be able to enter your number and as I'm driving. Your speed's up. I hope you're able to understand exactly what it is we're talking about because this message might be the most, look, might be the most important message we deliver to you this year. Why did you take out every barrier on that corner that time? Oh, because I was looking down at my phone. Ah. When you text and drive at home, how fast are you going? Uh, normally it's on the highway, so over 100. There's been times I look up and I'm almost rear-ending someone, so I, like, slam on the brakes. You still haven't sent me a text message. I don't. Maybe I sent it to the wrong person. And that's not even the biggest distraction for you, is it? Grooming is the number one thing you do while driving, isn't it? The main one that would cause the most distraction, yes. On the way to work, Jordan often files his nails. Wow. Jordan often applies bronzer. Oh. And Jordan often brushes his teeth. Oh. Whoa. This is like running with scissors, man. Do whatever it is you do to end that process. Now, I've already pretty much swallowed all the stuff, so it's pretty well done. That just sounds stupid. Distracted driving is indeed stupid. Every kid.
kid before they get their license should have to do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. Well, no, you I'm so lucky no, to even no. have you here now. It, it hurts me to think. Okay, no. <laughs> to think you're so upset about it. <laughs> okay, that's, we're good. <sighs> Polly drives distracted with her granddaughter in the car. And Bye drives distracted. I mean, Polly does her hair while driving. There goes the tree. Polly applies lipstick while driving. Whoa! And Polly checks Facebook while driving. Can you find it? I'm uh, not the one that does this for you. If you can't just stop in the middle of the road. Well, I did. You can't just stop in the middle of the road. I did. Yeah, but you can't. I do. I, do I that. know you do, I but do. you have do. to quit I doing do. that. Polly also has to quit texting while driving. Grammy, you just boxed the course. Now you're panicking again and you push the gas. Stop. Brakes. Brakes. The scariest part of this is the super slow speed of this challenge. 25 kilometers an hour. No, 25. Like, oh. I drive 150. Shmool smokes like a chimney in his truck at home. What happened? Just look two seconds away to the, the tinfoil from these cigarettes. Seconds just to look down. Smoking kills garbage cans. Having hot coffee while smoking is even deadlier. You've got a flat tire. You've got a flat tire. Stop, 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 stop. When the tire gets fixed, Mool tries sending me a text message. One, four, one, six. Whoa, man. Whoa. Unbelievable. Like, look how far he's off the course. This oh. I hate this phone. Shmool makes a potentially life-saving promise. I'll never use my phone while driving. When we come back... Oh, my God. It's our annual Eye of the Needle Challenge. Since arriving in rehab, Canada's worst drivers have already gone through two slow speed challenges designed to teach them exactly where their wheels are. Now, it's time to raise the speed and the stakes. But before we ask them to put their four wheels through five of these arches on our annual eye of the needle test, they'll be getting a high speed steering lesson from our expert, Philippe Letourneau. The first thing the drivers are told to do in this lesson is drive straight towards a cone. Simple, right? Yeah. It's so simple... Nose right in the middle. All of Canada's worst drivers do it easily. What guide you there? I focus straight ahead at the uh, cone. So, if you want to go between two cones, don't look at either one of them. Look directly between them. I'm going to look at just the empty space between the clothes. Yes. Or, to put that another way... Look where you want to go. Look where you want to go. Look, look, look where you want to go. When Jordan puts that advice into practice, 
he discovers it's easy. Piece of cake. It's easy for Jillian. Oh, that's okay. And it's easy for everyone. Damn, you're good. You have a world-class professional race car driver or instructor or... I don't really know what he actually does, to be honest. For this year's Eye of the Needle Challenge, drivers will have to go 80 kilometers an hour through these five arches. And as with every high-speed challenge this year, the drivers will be using this brand new Dodge Charger, which doesn't really look brand new anymore because the bad drivers have wrecked it. And Shmoo will show you how it's done. I'm waiting for a hug after this. You can never predict when Canada's worst driver begins, how well people are going to do. Shmuel has a habit of speeding on our challenges. Will he do this at 80? Let's see. Shmuel came fast off the line, but his speed is actually good. Yes! Yeah, man! Oh! I gotta go hug him now. Excuse me. That's Good amazing. Job. Very Good nice. Job. Yes! Shmuel deserves a bear hug. Hey! Uh, uh. Look at you go. Yeah. Booyah! It is booyah. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 swish. Before Slowpoke Renee does the eye of the needle, I'm having her practice driving 80K an hour. Gonna just pin it. Oh, yeah, baby. There you go. You're at 80. Perfect. Now hold 80. Watch, watch the speedometer. Yeah. Hold that 80. See how it's all normal? You're still at 80. You're still at 80. You're still at 80. Perfect. See how it's all normal once you get there? Yeah. You ready to do this challenge? I'm ready. Hopefully, a few good successes here, and Renee will be able to control her nerves. I sincerely worry if that will ever happen, though. I think the nerves might overwhelm the driving forever. Let's hope that she can start turning it around. Here she goes. Renee committed driving's cardinal sin. I looked down instead of where I was supposed to go. Jordan knows that he will never drive through foam arches in day-to-day -day life. Oh, I definitely do, but the concept it's teaching, I completely understand that and how it is valuable in day-to-day -day life. Jordan's story here at the rehab center is pretty sweet, to be honest with you. When he first got here, he complained about every single challenge. We'd have him swerve around stuff and go, I don't see why I'd ever swerve around that. That would never happen. We'll do a slalom now. I don't see why I would ever do a slalom, because that would never happen. Now we've set up arches, and he's grasping. These are important lessons. Will he pull off the eye of the needle? Let's find out. Where we go? Jordan starts off well. That's okay. His speed creeps up to 110. That's okay. Oh. oh, my God. Jordan often goes faster than we tell him to. My body tenses, my speed goes. When we come back... Thousands of years of human evolution take you to 100 years of driving. We're not designed to do this. One human being returns to the primordial slime. You're a strong guy. No, no. You're just tiny. It's Eye of the Needle Day at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. Oh, my God. Jillian had a very productive session with our therapist yesterday, but now she's freaking out. 
I'm trying to remember everything she said to me. You mean this woman right here? Oh. This is going to be your new rear view mirror hanger. Okay. okay? And we wrote down the three most important things that she said to you. Do you remember what they are? They are. Number one is replace the fear with funny. Because you're funny. <laughs> What's the next one? This will change your life. Remember that. What's number three? The yelling has to stop. That's for Mitch. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. That's for you, too, because if you yell, the anger's just going to start winning. Hang her up there. We got a new riding buddy. Jillian, a massive ball of emotion, either with rage or anger or fear or, or speed. Let's see how she does. 80K an hour. Stop staring at my speed, Mitchell. OK, first one. Jillian passed, yet she's still an emotional wreck. It's an amazing thing. I've I never know. had a student at the rehab center who passes consistently who isn't ready to graduate, ever. I don't feel she's ready yet, either. No. Do you feel you're ready? No. Shalom nominated his brother Shmuel as Canada's worst driver, and then Shmuel nominated Shalom. I actually think Shalom is the worst out of the two. So this could get ugly. This entire season of Canada's Worst Driver is focused on the dangers of speed. And by the time he reaches the first arch, Shalom is going 25% too fast, and he's still accelerating. Okay, I'm pretty sure I know which brother is worse than the other. Let's watch that run again. Shalom starts by steering smoothly. Not perfectly, but smoothly. However, when he hits the third arch, his steering becomes a series of small zigzags because he starts looking back and forth from one side of each arch to the other. And then when he loses control, he skids, which makes things worse. Shalom simply did not look where he wanted to go. Did you look at the edges of the arches? Uh, I, I, I may have peered around, like I was going at a hot, yeah. You peered around? Yeah. It's See, gonna burn you. It's gonna burn you every time, because you also kind of jiggle the wheel when you do that. You look over there, you go a little yeah, bit yeah. to the right, you look over there, you go a little bit yeah. to the left. That's why we talk about looking where you want to go. Polly says to drive through each arch, she will look. Right into the center of it. Don't look anywhere else, just right into the center of it. Polly, 80K an hour through the eye of the needle. Do you think she can do it? I want to be positive, but I just don't think she can. Headed for the first arch, Polly's speed is exactly 80. Oh, I just wrecked it again. No, you didn't. No, okay. You got Am it. I okay? Find the gap. Okay. Find the gap. Quit Find the gap. Don't put your head down. Okay. Find the gap. Oh, that's good. That's, right. that's much better. Oh, thank you. Polly <laughs> squeezed through four of the five arches. We love you, baby. I love you, too. Bye. Someone's about to graduate. What are we going to do? But first, the nominees will chat with our panel of experts. I didn't yell at Tim, though. You don't want to offend Tim, but you know that Mitch can take it, so you let him have it, and that's rude. Yeah.
episode of Canada's Worst Driver, the drivers drove with Tim. They perked, they drove distracted, and they did our annual Eye of the Needle challenge. You good, Shalom? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. After the Eye of the Needle challenge, Jillian told me it was the first time she'd ever driven her fiancé, Mitch, without yelling at him. And she said it was difficult. Yeah, because I just, I'm in the moment, and I get, if I'm not crying, I'm yelling. What do, what do you get out of yelling? It's just like an instant relief. Like, whatever I'm stressed out about inside comes out in a different way, and I don't have to feel like that anymore. It's a way for you to self-soothe. But then you feel bad about it later, but you can't help it right then and there. Like, it just comes out like that. You don't need to yell. You just choose to abuse your fiancé. Jillian didn't yell at Tim when she drove him. You know damn well that yelling is rude. That's why you don't do it to Tim. Yeah. And you know that your husband, or your future husband, can take it, so you lay the boots to him. Stop doing that. That's just cruel. Yeah. And if that kid walks from your life because you're rude to him, you're screwed, honey. I know. We're in the business of changing lives. And Jordan says we've already changed his. For sure, it's not just driving. It's a life-changing experience. So do you want to graduate now? I would like to, yes. Yeah? Yeah. And do you deserve to? I think all of the growth that I've had, I think so. Shmuel also thinks he deserves to graduate. You passed every challenge this episode. Thank you. But was Shmuel being honest when he said he will never drive distracted again? It goes without saying, I get in the car, I'm, cell phone's off, it's in my glove compartment. Lesson learned, I will never do that again. Does anyone else feel that they deserve to graduate? Uh, no, probably not. No. It's time to choose this episode's graduate. I don't really see a debate this episode. I see one person who stands out clear as a bell. Do we all agree on that? I agree. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. Bum, bum, bum. Jill. Let's talk, okay? You have more driving skills than anyone else here. You've passed more challenges, and thanks to the time you've managed to spend with Shamala, your attitude towards Mitch as a passenger and towards driving in general has changed. And look, I do know that you don't think you're ready to go back on public roads yet. But let's be honest. What are we going to do? We're going to graduate Shmuel? Yeah, we're going to graduate Shmuel. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Thank yes, you so man. much. You deserve it. Thank you. At home in Calgary, Shmuel was an incredibly dangerous driver who had his hands on anything but the wheel. Before I came to Rio, I was a distracted driver, which I'm very which now I'm, I'm disgusted by. I'm not I'm not proud of that. Shmuel should be proud of what he learned here, though. Yes! Perfect, Shmuel, perfect. Thank you, Mr. Young Husband. Shmuel passed every challenge this episode. That is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. Which is why he's now got his driver's license back. Yes! Yes! Look at this, baby. And girls, it says single on there. Yes! Shmuel may have graduated, but... I'm gonna fall back in line. He's sticking around rehab until his brother gets to leave. Brotherly love. It's a beautiful thing. The way the five remaining nominees handle a vehicle, though, not so beautiful. In fact, one of them is Canada's worst driver. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver, the nominees try to reverse a boat trailer into a sickeningly tight garage. <sighs> they endure the longest reverse in the world! Ooh, woo, woo. Easy, easy, easy. And 
things really spiral into mayhem on our annual Icy Corner Challenge. I suck at driving. Take a tour of the factory floor to see how your favorite products come to life. Next, on How It's Made. Join host Matt Rogers as he goes deeper with the miners tomorrow.